The 80s were a time for blurring lines. Men and women shared hairstyles, scooters looked like cars, and cruised at speeds only previously experienced by motorcycles. With the Honda Elite, gone was the smooth round lines of the past. Gone was the easy to work on 50cc air-cooled engines. Honda wanted futuristic lines, horsepower numbers more than a single digit, CVT transmissions, electronic dashboard, liquid cooling, automatic chokes, and car signal relays so loud you can hear them at highway speeds. They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so baby book me an eye exam, cause this is a beautiful machine. At its heart, the Elite is a joyful scooter for around town, and despite weighing almost 300 pounds, it holds that weight under your seat, making it really not noticeable at all. And on top of that, the 250cc delivers almost 20 horsepower, making getting in front of most traffic easy as can be. I've used it to go on picnic dates and it has no problem doubling up with a passenger, while still being fuel efficient and nimble. It is a great around town scooter. The braking comes from two popcan sized drum brakes front and back and is exactly what you would expect. The CVT rolls on power so smoothly that it makes wheelies almost impossible for someone like myself who can't do wheelies but it is definitely the CVT's fault. And on a side note, always ensure you have the extremely short kickstand fully extended or this could happen to you. Stupid accidents aside, we all know Honda can make a great around town scooter, but this isn't a normal Honda scooter. This is a highway speed capable scooter and that is the main reason I bought this. On a recent trip to Kenya, I saw just how much can be done with smaller displacement bikes. Everything from using them as moving vans, to farm trucks, or even cross-country midnight taxis with no lights. And it all got me thinking, maybe my Honda Elite could be a highway-capable adventure machine. So when I got back, I would set out on a scooter adventure to see what the Honda Elite could do. Now before I embark on my biggest scooter trip yet, this little guy needs some maintenance, and one major safety concern needs to be addressed. The rear springs are very undersprung, and when you have a full grown human body and all its camping gear, it can result in a very floaty front end, and of course, speed wobbles if you should take your hands off. So a common upgrade is the Honda CB350 shocks, which are much stiffer, and they have some basic dampening adjustment. They do require some minor modifications to install. But to work on almost anything on the Elite requires dismantling of many body panels. The radiator thermostat switch that turns the electric fans on had failed, so I wired up a simple on-off switch, but that was just temporary. So I need to replace that and top up the coolant. This scooter calls for oil changes every 1,000 miles. I changed the oil and reset the oil change dash color indicator, this handy little thing that will change from green to red when it's time for an oil change if you have a working speedometer, which I did up until the day before, and now I know why it's not working. Then the tedious task of reassembling all the body panels, which makes me wish Honda had installed a functional hood on the Elite. Now all that's left is the pack. My tried and true giant loop great basin bag, my sleeping arrangement to accommodate my old man back, some camera gear, some tools, and all the basic things for cooking. There's a link in the description if you wanna know what I'm using. Now for the test to see if the Honda Elite is an adventure capable machine. I will be taking it from my home in this wheat field to the Rocky Mountains, with Banff, Alberta being my final destination, where I had a friend passing through who put my scooter on a trailer and bring me back home. A sort of one-way cheater trip, covering just over 500 kilometers in two days. A very relaxed pace with lots of time to stop and check things out. The question I get asked the most would be how does the Elite do at highway speeds? Well, a good way to show you this would be a 0 to 100 kilometer test, so you get an idea of the power and speed of the Elite. Okay. Let's try a 0 to 100 speed test. We don't have a speedometer, the cable snapped, but we do have this little app here. I don't know if we'll be able to see it, but I'll be able to see it, so that's all that matters. We're on a very quiet country road. Okay, reading zero, grab it up and go.
Now, I knew the Elite was slow, but even I was surprised by that number. A not so surprising note on the Elite is that it struggles on any form of off-road. The 10 inch wheels, low ground clearance, and a center stand that hangs off the bottom makes for a pretty subpar dual sport. Surprise, surprise. Eat your heart out, KTM. Oh, God. Okay, that's super deep. Mistakes were made, mistakes were made. <laughs> but having your feet always an inch and a half from the ground makes walking out of a sticky situation a nice. breeze. What a good little scooter. Hill climb champion. One nice side effect of the CVT rolling on power so smoothly and slowly is that the rear wheel rarely breaks traction on dirt or rocky surfaces. It just slowly grips and moves forward. Nailed it. Well, looking for foot bags. Don't have those. It's not all bad news in riding the Elite as a highway machine. The wind protection is the best I have ever experienced from tip of my toes to the top of my head. Even in bad weather, you can ride and stay mostly dry and warm. After a full day of riding and feeling like the Elite just isn't light enough in the front end, I stopped to load up a giant bag of firewood, just to ensure that floaty front end never touches the ground. But the bumpy paths while looking for a campsite made short work of my tie down job for my firewood. Lost my wood. As I pulled into my camping area for the first night, I decided to just sit a minute and reflect on how awesome it is that I just rode a scooter to the mountains. It's rare for me to get to my camping spots early enough in the day to relax and enjoy myself, to throw on a podcast, make some food and put my feet up. 10 out of 10 evening, all thanks to the Honda Elite for bringing me here. I asked my friendly neighbor what he thinks about the Honda Elite, and this was all he had to say. Well, I'll we'll get to test out the waterproofness of my El Cheapo Amazon tent. I awoke the next day dry, further reaffirming my decisions to not buy a $500 tent and go with the cheap one. This was the second day of my trip and it had me a little more concerned about the lack of power. Because now I'm in the mountains and I have only one route option. No more hiding on quiet back roads. This is our first hill struggle here. Full throttle here. Just... 
Come on, buddy. That was so good. You do it. Totally been. It's kind of weird because if I had a standard, I could just drop a gear and build up the revs, but it just sits down low with the revs. That's all, that's all it's got. But there's worse places that have to go slow. I absolutely love this part of the country. It's still relatively quiet in comparison to the big parks, and the scenery is just incredible. And no, I didn't edit the colors of this lake. It is that blue. Although, if you are going to explore around off the highway, there might be better suited vehicles. As I watch bikes go by me with more than 19 horsepower, I start to feel some envy. And as I merge onto the largest and fastest section of highway on the final stretch to my destination, that envy grows into full-blown jealousy. I get flashbacks of riding a 40-year-old 440cc across Canada and just that constant feeling of pushing a machine a little too much for too long. Luckily, unlike that trip, this motor didn't punch a massive hole through the side of it. In fact, for this whole trip, the scooter has been perfectly reliable. Always started instantly, never got hot, I never had to pull a single tool out of my tool bag. So to answer my own question, is the Honda Elite a good highway machine? Yes. If I lived in Kenya. But here, not so much. The entire time I ride this bike at highway speeds, my brain is constantly reminding me that I have the tiniest drum brakes I have ever seen on an overloaded machine with handling that was described as nervous back in the 80s. A sudden gust of headwood can cost me 10 kilometers an hour, causing that Dodge Ram that's been tailgating me to commit a war crime. While a side gust makes you realize having no frame or gas tank to squeeze between your legs is a very uncomfortable feeling, like floating down the highway on an office chair at 100 kilometers an hour. And on the subject of gas tanks, it is small and is located under your seat, which means every time you stop for gas, you have to take the luggage off just to access the filler. The fact that it's a terrible highway machine really doesn't come as any surprise though. Maybe the surprising thing is that it doesn't make me like it any less. Just the fact that Honda made a scooter that can do highway speeds but didn't bother making it stop or handle any better is amazing to me. If you want a big maxi scooter today, there's lots of options. They have disc brakes, ABS, longer frames for more secure handling, bigger wheels, and even more power. They'll probably never make a scooter like this again, and that's probably for the best, but that does make it very special in my eyes. Well, that was lucky.